What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out one of the most game-changing features that was added in Blender 4.0, the ability to add your own node tools to Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in Blender 4.0, there were actually two fairly big changes to the way that geometry nodes work that make it much easier to share different tools and add different tools to Blender. And so first off, we're gonna talk about the node-based tool functionality, which gives you the ability to actually add modeling tools to Blender using geometry nodes. And then in the second part of the video, we'll talk about how they've uh, kind of upgraded geometry nodes so that you can more easily access those tools directly inside of Blender as well. But I can link to this uh, documentation page where they talk a little bit about the way that these node-based tools work. But let's jump over into Blender for a second. And so let's say that we wanted to create a tool and we wanted to create a tool that you could actually apply to objects inside of Blender. Well, what you could do is let's say that we wanted to add a geometry node tool set. Um, so you're gonna notice that when you jump over into the geometry nodes window, right? So I click the drop down and I click on the geometry node editor. There's now an option in here for modifier or tool. And so modifier is going to create a geometry node setup that you use as a part of your modifiers. It's very similar to what we've been doing in the past. However, let's take a look at the tool function for a second. And so let's say we wanted to create a tool that randomly extruded faces in our selection. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we've selected tool and then we're going to add that tool set. So we're gonna start by clicking on new and this is just a function of adding geometry nodes into or creating a geometry nodes tool. So that is unchanged. But notice how there's an option here now where you can, if you're in tool settings, you can set if this is something designed for hair curves or a mesh, and you can also set if the tool is going to show up in edit mode or sculpt mode. So in this case, we're gonna want this one to show up in edit mode. Okay, and while we can talk about geometry nodes a little bit later, the goal of this is not to teach you how to use those nodes, but rather to show you how to create tools and then manage them. So real quick, I'm just going to add an extrude mesh node right here. I'm going to add a random value. And I'm gonna set this so that I get a random selection. I'm gonna duplicate this random value and I'm gonna use this to set my offset scale. And I'm gonna drag these into the seat. So very simple tool specifically designed to randomly extrude faces. So let's jump over into edit mode real quick. So if I tab into edit mode, one thing that you might notice is you might notice that right now there's this little button right here that you can click on. And what this is gonna do is this is going to find your non asset geometry node tools that have been created in your model. And so notice how there's an option here for tool. And so let's say that I was to come in here and rename this. So we're gonna call this random extrude faces. Well now, if I click on this drop down, notice how it's gonna find random extrude faces because that's the name of this geometry node setup. Well, what this is gonna do is this is going to, and I'm gonna move my Bonnie model out of the way. What this is gonna do is this is going to take our selection and it's going to randomly extrude it. So if I run this, notice what it does is it runs this like any of these other tools in Blender. And one thing you might notice is these things that I've dragged over here into the inputs, I can actually adjust using this slider right here. So any of those geometry node settings that I've set in here are going to show up as options in here. And so now what that means is that means that I have created a tool for Blender that allows me to add a tool to my tool set up here, which by the way, I don't think I've seen any program that really allows you to do this in the same way where you can just add tools to the program like this, because this was really fast once I figured out the nodes. But now what I can do is you can take this geometry node setup and you can save it as an asset. So what you can do is you can right click right here and notice how there's an option for mark as asset. And so when I mark that as an asset, that means that now if I save this into an asset folder, the asset browser in Blender can find it. And I'm gonna call this one 
random extrude faces. And I'm going to save it. And remember that I have this saved in here as an asset. Okay, and so now what I want to do is I want to go into my preferences and I want to make sure that I've added that folder to my geometry nodes. So in this case, right, I'm going to click on plus right here. I'm going to scroll into my Blender Tools folder, which is where I save that, and I'm going to add an asset library. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this to append rather than append reuse data. And in this case, it already had a folder in here that showed this. So this is just going to show up as a second folder. Don't worry about that. But now if I go into my asset browser and I go find that tools blender tools, notice how that random extrude faces tool is going to show up in there. And so that's actually really powerful. And I'm just going to add a starting plane, which is something I've just saved in my, uh, library, but that's super powerful because since this is saved as an asset in a folder, it's set as a geometry nodes tool. And so since that's saved as a geometry nodes tool in that folder, Notice how if I click on this drop down right here, this is actually going to show that random extrude faces. So because it's in your asset library now, I can use this inside of any Blender file like this. And so one thing that's cool about this is you can actually use your asset categories in here in order to set the way those are going to show up on your screen. So. For example, I've created a couple other geometry node tools that I'm going to put in that folder. Okay. And so now I'm opening up another file where I've created multiple different geometry node setups in here. And so if you look at this, I've created a random move vertices and a random extrude tool. And what I've done is notice how within my tools function right here, I've created a category. So what I did is I created a drop down for geometry nodes, which is really going to be geometry nodes modifiers. And then I've created one for tools. And so tools are going to be the ones that I actually want to show up in here, right? But what I've done is I've created a folder for tools and a folder for randomization tools like this. And then I've saved that asset file. Well, what that means is that means that if I was to create a new file right here and go into that asset browser, because those are assets and they're saved in a folder that Blender is looking at, right? Those are going to show up in here, but more importantly, if I tap into edit mode with this, notice how I have an option in here for tools. And then I have an option in here for randomization tools. So that is driven by the organization that I have in here for my blender tools in this folder, right? So notice how tools, randomization tools shows up in here. So you can use this to actually create multiple different groups of tools that you can use in blender. And so notice how I can use this in order to do things like doing my random adjustment right here just like this. Now, one thing I'm noticing in this, I, I haven't tested this a lot, but I have these on an external hard drive because I kind of like move around a lot and use different computers. Um, and it does seem like these tools run kind of slow when they're being accessed um, from that external location. I don't know if that's just something that kind of is a part of Blender right now, or um, if it's something else, if it's because I'm storing those assets in an external file or in an external location, but these can run a little bit slow. Um, and I haven't really had a chance to dive into that all that much, but notice how it's going back and it's like refreshing in here. So I'm not sure what exactly is driving the performance issues because randomly moving these vertices shouldn't be that heavy. Um, but just note that that is a thing. All right. And so the fact that those tools show up automatically in here, if they've been marked as an asset down here is actually a really cool function. One thing I would say is you probably want to make sure that you're keeping these organized as you go um, so that you don't get a bunch of options on the top of the page or anything like that. But the other thing that's been changed is in addition to giving you the ability to add actual tools to Blender, the way that the geometry node setups are managed in Blender has also been adjusted. So let's say that I wanted to create a modifier that would randomly scatter something on a surface, right? So I'm going to tab out of edit mode real quick, and I'm just going to create that modifier. All right. And so remember that this, I want to be a modifier, not a tool. 
setup. So I've created this one as a modifier and basically it's a very simple tool that's just designed to let me select an object and then to scatter something on the surface, right? Nothing really special about it or anything like that, but I want you to see how this works. So I've named it random scatter and I'm going to do the same thing. Again, remembering that this is a modifier setup. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this as an asset. Well, now if I jump into my asset browser right here under all, and I'm just going to refresh this so that it shows up. Notice how that random scatter is going to show up in my geometry node setups right here. Well, this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it into my geometry nodes modifiers section. And in this case, I'm going to drag it into object placement like this. Well, notice how I now have two modifiers under geometry nodes, object placement, and you can call these whatever you want by the way. But now what that means is that means that since this is being referenced by the asset browser, um, whenever you add a modifier, your geometry nodes modifiers folder is going to show up in the drop down over here. So a lot of people got kind of, uh, they, they didn't really like this new change to the geometry node setup, but the reason they made it is so that not only can you access the original modifiers that are in here, you can create a list of your own. So, and if I was to start a new file, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this because this is where my assets live. But if I was to start a new file and say, and so say that I had a surface in here and I wanted to scatter this object along the surface. Well, if I go into my modifier setups and click on add modifier, notice how now those options are gonna be in there based on their category. And I've got the option in here for random scatter. And so this geometry node setup that I created that randomly scatters an object, notice how that's now gonna show up in here and I can actually make those adjustments. But this is super easy to do now because I'm able to save those assets or those tools as assets in this folder. Um, and it's automatically picking up which ones are modifiers and which ones are tools. Because if I tab into edit mode, those tools are still gonna show up under tools right here. So I could take this and I could do a random move to the vertices, just like I did before. And that's going to drop these in here. And so say that you wanted to add a thumbnail to this object, what you could do is you could go back into the file that this lives in. All right, so I'm gonna do a don't save, but Say you wanted to save a thumbnail for this asset. So what you can do is you can select it, tap the N letter key, and notice how there's a little drop down right here that'll let you render the active object. And so what rendering the active object is going to do is this is going to basically create a render image um, of whatever this geometry node is doing right here. And you can use that in order to create a thumbnail for your different modifiers. So notice how I've done that for like my random extrude. I did it with a sphere that's got those random extrusions. I've got my random move vertices in here, but now these show up as a thumbnail rather than the little geometry node icon goes in here. But then you can do a save and you'll be able to access that in any file moving forward because it's being referenced by the asset browser. So we can dive in depth in this in the future if you're interested, but I will say this could be a super game changing feature because this is really the first tool that I've seen for any modeling program, maybe like something in Houdini might be able to do this, but where you can actually quickly create tools and just add them to your modeling tool set inside Blender. But leave a comment below, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.